Hi everyone and thanks for being here. So today we're going to overclock the 14600K paired with B7060 motherboard. This is the Asus B7060i IT. So here what you want to do guys in specific with this motherboard because this motherboard is a mini ITX so you might want to keep the temps under control because this motherboard is going to be installed 99% of the times in a mini ITX build. So being on those little spaces with all the heat problems and all the dissipating the heat we need to tweak certain settings here and keep the temps of the CPU under control so for doing that let's go through the bios which are the most effective settings we can use also the intel xtu if you want to use that up or under vaulting and overclocking the cpu the 14600k supports also the ai settings from the top so let me know guys if you want me to go also through those settings it will be a topic for another video so this is only through the bios and certain set keep in mind that these settings might be different and might work differently depending on your cpu depending on your motherboard here i'm using an asus motherboard but these are pretty similar to all the other settings with all the B7060 motherboard. So the first thing to do is going to the advanced mode of the BIOS and here we got the first settings which is the AI overclocker tuner which is the XMP. So the XMP, I always suggest you guys to enable the XMP because that will help the performance overall of the system. So here I have selected XMP2. You can go through some testing here just to be sure that this profile is working with your particular memory because not all the memories can support or can work properly with these settings. With that said, let's move to Intel Adaptive Boost technology. Here you can leave it on auto, you can leave it enabled. This is going to boost the performances of the CPU. Might somehow interfere with settings that we are going to use down below, but anyway, leave it at auto. And here we have an interesting submenu, which is the ASUS Performance Enhancement 3.0. And I suggest you guys to read carefully what are the descriptions here, because depending on what you want to do with your system, you have to select one of these options here. The first option is leave it disabled, as we can see here we are going to the default CPU set settings from Intel to decide managing the temperature, managing the power limits and so on. If you enable this one we will let to the motherboard to decide and to optimize the, the, all the settings and all the CPU settings unlock power limits and so on. But for unlocking the power limits we have to go through another submenu and we'll get to that in a minute. And the last settings is limit CPU temp and 90 degrees. So it's going to apply those power limits and so on for keeping the CPU at 90 degrees. So here is the simple thing you can select this one leave everything else at auto and just hold it today just set this one here and every time your cpu will be limited at 90 degrees this might be okay or not be okay depending on your system and depending how you want to manage those temps but we can tweak a little more to get a little bit more performances going a little bit more higher than 90 degrees so in this case i will leave it enabled so you can copy the settings here this is we have the dram frequency ratio you can select between 100 or 133 it depends on your memory again you have to be sure that your memory supports these settings. So here we can change the performance or ratio. We can leave to sync all cores or to leave it an auto, so the system, the motherboard, and depending on what you choose on the Azure performance enhancement, and we are going to have all the core ratio. You can go by sync all cores if you want to go just really simple and type 53, which is the maximum of the cores. You can type whatever settings you want. The nice thing of this motherboard is that it's going to apply always 50, which is the maximum for the CPU. On the efficient core ratio, again, sync all cores if you want to go really simple you can type whatever you want but the value that the motherboard and these settings are going to accept is the 40 multiplier ratio and let's go to dg plus vrm so here we are going to decide the power that the vrm is going to allow us to have what i suggest here is to apply to the level 4 recommended for oc as we can see here we have this is going to support a little bit better the overclocking in this case so the, you can try with this one or you can try with others levels here or you can leave it on auto but the first suggestion here is, is to start with level for. And if you want to tweak a little bit more, you can go with these settings here and you can apply even the maximum current capability. So it's going to exceed the current capability of the motherboard. And here is a little trick part that you have to enable for the power management. If you enable the ASUS performance enhancement here, we have to go on the internal CPU power management and set everything to the maximum. As we can see, the motherboard itself, the description can let us know what are the maximum values that we can add here. As we can see, I have set everything to the maximum. So we are telling to the motherboard to use all the maximum power and all the possible power amps and wattage and whatever else we want to use for overclocking and another interesting thing of this specific motherboard which is a really nice feature is if you go through the tweakers paradise we can enable the 104 micro code which is the switch mixer micro code then it's allowing us to have a better performances on the overclocking so this is a really nice thing and you should enable it if you want to be sure that everything is applied properly and the last thing that we want to change here 
here is the actual VRM core voltage. This is the core voltage that uh, motherboard is giving to our CPU and here we can decide between auto, manual mode if you want to set manually the CPU core voltage. So here you can decide between 1.2 if you want for example uh, 0.2 and then give it a try if this is working with your particular CPU. Keep in mind that the uh, increment on the changes should be in 0.005 volts so you guys are going to check if that globally settings are working properly. In this case I'm going to use the offset mode because I'm going to kind of overclock the CPU but at the same time I don't want to exceed those voltage so here um, you can start with 0.005 and so on. One setting I check that is working properly with my CPU is 0.03 you can start with 0.05 but keep in mind that here we have a negative offset mode so the values here are the opposite of the positive offset. So uh, with that said I will set mine to 0.03 because this is something that I'm sure is working but you guys should start really with tiny amount of voltage so you can check if the CPU is working properly you have some tests you might want to use different tools for testing the CPU. So with that said let's jump to Cinebench and check some performances and temps. So here we have a single core test in Cinebench 2024 as we can see we have uh, 119 points for a score and the temps is a maximum of 70 degrees for the older package and here we are near to the 53,000 megahertz for the P core. So as we can see guys the temps and also the core frequencies and also the performances here on the single core are really good so we are having here the temps under control and we are having also some nice performances. And here we have some testing on the multi-core as we can see here we are reaching 100 degrees which is the limit of the CPU and as we can see here the power drawing and also the temps are pretty high on the multi-core test. Keep in mind that all these tests are just stress tests for benchmarking and whatever. In real life scenarios it is difficult that you are going to use the CPU in this high demand task so it can occur sometimes that you have tasks to use the CPU but I doubt that you are going to use the CPU for all the time with these high tasks and you are going to reach these temps. Anyway for preventing to reach these temps we have to go to the BIOS and modify the offset voltage with another value so you guys can have less voltage less, po less power of course and the points here on Cinebench might change a little bit but in that case you are going to have less temps at least in the multicore. Keep in mind that all these settings might work or might not work with your system. You might have system crashes or strange behaviors. In that case, you have to roll back to what you have changed for the last settings in order to have a more stable system. If you guys find this video helpful and informative, please consider subscribing to the channel, hit the like button and share the video. Thanks a lot for watching.